Hi everyone, the question of the day this time is, can I dry fire? Am I going to break my gun if I dry fire too much? What kind of wear, uh, what type of wearing I'm putting on the gun when I dry fire? If you're a competitive shooter, you're dry firing, you likely dry firing a lot. You might be doing that every day, you might be doing that even more than once a day. So let's look into what we need to understand to answer this question in a minute or so. Okay, so before anything else, what I mean by dry fire, in this video, dry fire means you're pulling the trigger completely. So an hammer fired gun like this one, you're pulling the trigger in double action like that, or single action, it doesn't really matter. Your trigger, you pull the trigger all the way to the end, your hammer falls, and you got nothing on the chamber. Or it could have a snap cap or something in the chamber there to provide you some sort of protection. That's exactly what we're going to talk about. Whether or not you need it, and uh, what kind of wearing you're putting on the gun with a dry fire. That Every time you pull the trigger, you are you activating certain springs in your gun, and it doesn't matter if it's light fire or dry fire, those springs are being used, and therefore there is wearing on them. So it's your hammer spring, every time, it's, every time your hammer goes back and falls, you're putting some stress in your hammer spring, your hammer is in the firing pin, which has a firing pin spring, which also, it's also being used, and you get a trigger return spring, obviously, every time you pull the trigger. So. On the, in the other video, we talked about number of rounds that you, th you should think about when, you know, replacing those springs. Um, it's, it's basically, it, it's really more of number of times you pull the trigger, except for the recoil spring, unless you're racking it when you're doing, uh, when you're, when you're doing your dry fire exercise, your dry fire drills. But other than that, um, it's, you know, if I say 10,000 rounds, it's 10,000 times you pull the trigger. That's what it really means, right? So the fire pin spring is a little bit special in that in this situation because if you get nothing on your chamber, if it's truly dry, you're doing dry fire with, you don't have a dummy round or a snap cap round or anything like that, like that there, your firing pin is going to extend a little bit further than it would if there was something on the chamber to stop it. Why is this important? Because you put in a little bit of a different wear on your, on your firing pin spring. With your firing pin moving forward, moving further, that firing pin spring is compressing a little bit more uh, shorter length than it would if there was something in the chamber. Now, um, does that mean that you're, you're going to break a fire pin spring doing dry fire? I'm not aware of anybody who broke the fire pin spring because of dry fire. It's more of a function, you know, between dry fire and live fire, how many times you pull that trigger, how many times your hammer hit that fire pin, etc., etc. So you should check your fire pin spring at night then anyway. So I'm not going to put that as a problem. So back to the question, is it safe after all to dry fire my gun? Am I going to break if I dry fire too much? Um, I'm going to say that specific for CZs, double action CZs, like your Shadow 2, your Shadow 1, your AO1, your more competition oriented guns that don't have a firing pin block, uh, and that's true for all the, the single action CZs too, they are fine. You can dry fire them as much as you want. They're not going to put any more wearing on them by dry firing than you would by light firing. Actually, there's more wearing with light firing than a dry fire. On those specific guns so you're totally fine you're totally safe that's not the same story when it comes to guns CZ guns that have a fine pin block though like this SP-01 for instance so if you have an SP-01 you have to erase what I said and it's actually not safe for you to dry fire so let's see why so why it's not safe to dry fire my SP-01 without any sort of protection well the SP-01 different than Shadow 1, 2 and A1 it is equipped with a fine pin block you see this plunger here? This is telling me this gun is equipped with a firing pin block. Why is a firing pin block relevant to this discussion? Well, when you look at the back here, the Shadow 1, Shadow 2, and AO1, they keep the firing pin in place with uh, by using a firing pin plate. There's a, slide, there's a plate here that to remove the firing pin, you just depress it, push the plate away, and the firing pin comes out. That simple. On SP-1, it's a solid piece. There is no plate. Right, your frying pan chamber is solid. There's nothing, nothing, um, no such a you know a frying pan plate here to stop the frying pan in place. So what is keeping that frying pan in place is this counter roll pin here. It's actually one of the ways to tell really quick if you have a SP01 and a Shadow One. You see someone using one. They're so similar. It's difficult. It's di you know it's hard to say like well the hammer shape is different, and, but externally it's really difficult to tell to tell them apart except that the SP-01, the Shadow 1 doesn't have this pin, this roll pin, it doesn't need, doesn't need to, because like I said, the firing pin is kept in place by a plate on the back as opposed to this roll pin. So to understand why this is a problem, 
let's look at what a fine pen of a Shadow 2, Shadow 1, or A1 most likely look like. So it's just a round pin. There's no notch, there's nothing there. And it slides inside the fine pin chamber with basically no friction in anything except for the fine pin spring. When you look at your SP01 fine pin, it is very different. Let me get this into focus here. You got these two notches here. You got one notch this side and one notch on this side. And uh, the reason why you have these two notches is the first one is the one that is going to be matched by a fine pin block that will prevent the fine pin to move unless that plunger that I showed you underneath the slide is depressed. The second notch, that's the one that is relevant to this discussion, is where that roll pin, I'm gonna get another roll pin here just to show you, that roll pin goes through your slide and keep the fine pin in place. The fine pin doesn't move because this roll pin is preventing it to do it. Remember when I talked about the fact that when you dry fine, a fine pin moves a little bit further ahead than it would if there was something on the chamber to stop it. That's what the problem is here. If it moves further than it should, this it, this notch, this side of the notch here is gonna is gonna have an impact with your roll pin. Well, we got a solid piece of steel imp causing, you know, impacting a roll pin, which is hollow. What's gonna happen eventually is one of these parts are gonna give and between solid and hollow, your hollow part's gonna break. So when that fine pin, when that, when this um, roll pin here breaks, it's a little bit, it could be a little bit of a nightmare to clear, to clear it out, to take it out. Because if it's break, it's really break or bent inside, you can't just get a, you know, a roll pin punch and punching it out. It becomes a little bit more complicated to, to take it out. So. So what's the solution to this? So should I just not dry fire my SP1 at all? No, actually there's a very simple solution to this. So let's see what you can do here. So what's the solution to this? How can I safely dry fire my SP1? Well, there are two, two ways that I can think of. One is you can use a snap cap, a dummy round or something in your chamber that would then prevent that firing pin to move forward too much and that, you know, that will work. That's not ideal because if you're doing dry fire and every time you, you want, if you want to rack your gun as part of the dry fire drill, every time you, every time you rack it, you're going to eject that, that round off your chamber and you need to you know, remember to put it again. It's, it's becoming, it becomes kind of annoying. So the other way, which is my favorite way, is like you get an O-ring, like a piece of rubber like this that you can buy for cents. You can go to you know, your favorite hardware store, your neighborhood hardware store and buy a bunch of this for like a dollar or so or Amazon sells them as well. Anyways, get a, an old ring. You might have some laying around your house, your shop. Put right here on your firing pin, around your firing pin like that. Now what you're doing is your hammer is not hitting your firing pin directly, right? It is hitting that rubber that, that's providing some sort of protection to a firing pin, which, you know, solves the problem. I can pull the trigger now as much as I want and it's fine. It's not actually hitting my fine pin as hard as it would at least. Um, and it's protecting that roll pin from breaking. There are other solutions would be, uh, other solution out there would be replace this roll pin. Like I know uh, there are some aftermarket solid pins that you can put here. I'm not really a big fan of that because then you have steel hitting steel. It's your fine pin hitting that solid piece of steel. And it's, you know, it's one of those things that you think about it like, it's like your slide stop and your barrel. Like you don't want, what do you want to break there? Slide stop is preferred, you know, you prefer to break the slide stop than your barrel. So in this case, between the firing pin and the roll pin, um, kind of better to, to break the roll pin. However, um, you really don't want anything to break there. So I would just put an O-ring and be happy with your dry fire. So happy dry fire.